Okay, I got a head start to save time. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be the using Gauss's law to find the electric field due to a thin line of charge, which we, which we already did. We're going to do it again. Okay. So here I drew the, the line of charge twice. Here it is looking at it from the side. And if you had the if you had it coming straight out, it would look like this. And we need to sketch the pattern of the electric field so that we can then, um, you know, pick a fake surface to calculate the electric flux through. So in this case, we we try to pick something that would give some type of symmetry uh, that would make our integrations easier. I mean, if I picked a box here, it's not going to work because it will work. I take that back. It's not going to work easily uh, because it's not going to give us a simple integration. And that's what we want. But if I pick, I'm going to pick a cylinder just like the last case, like that. You can see that, again, I'm going to get the electric fields perpendicular to the area. Okay. And, but in this case, it was perpendicular to the, I'm sorry, parallel to the area vector. Um, and in this case, the ends are going to have a zero flux. Okay, but I'm going to pick the same shape. So if I draw it like this, and this is going to have a radius of r, and then if I draw that same one up here, so we're close to the, to the, we have to have a long rod and we have to be close to it so that we can assume the electric field's constant like that. If you have a, if you have a finite rod, these electric fields start pointing out and it, it's not this true anymore. Okay, so this is going to be a length l, and a radius r. I'm not saying the area, I'm saying the radius now. Okay. So again, we're going to have to do three fluxes. The end caps plus the sides. But in this case, let's look at the ends. That's Here I have the electric field like that. So here, n hat is that way, n hat is that way. On the end caps, uh, the flux e dot n hat they're perpendicular, so the flux is zero. So the, the, the flux on the end caps is zero. So I only need to worry about the sides. So the flux on the side is going to be E dot n hat dA. Okay, so again, like I said, if you look right here, n hat is perpendicular to the area pointing away. And in all those locations, it's in the exact same direction as the electric field. So when I take E dot N hat, I just get E, the scalar value, the magnitude of E. So this is going to be E uh, dA. And so, see, we picked something such that that would work. This also assumes that the electric field is constant, around, the magnitude's constant, or I couldn't pull it out. But if I pick a cylinder, then these are all the same distance away, so they would have the same electric field. Now I just have to find the area of that side. And, and that side, if you unroll it, is a rectangle. So it has a length L, and this is the circumference of the circle. So this is just going to be E times L times 2 pi R, where R is just the radius of that cylinder. So that's the, that's the flux. Now how much charge is inside? Uh, Qn is going to be, <coughs> if I look at the same thing, if I say the ratio of the charge inside of here to the total length, which again I'll call L prime, which I messed up, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Um, then if I say Qn over L, that would be the total charge Q over the total length L prime. You, you, sometimes problems will give this as the linear charge density, um, the charge per unit length, which is this whole thing. Okay. Um, okay, so that's Qn. So if I put this all together, I get E 2 pi L R equals uh, Qn is going to be Lq over L prime. So it's going to, and so we get Lq over L prime, and then we have an epsilon naught. 
Okay, so now I want to solve for the magnitude of, of E. First thing you can see is this length cancels with that. And I get E equals Q. I'll put this Q over L prime up here over 2 pi r epsilon naught. And that's the electric field due to a line of charge. R is still there. I didn't cancel. So whatever the radius, as I <coughs> get the radius of the cylinder larger, the magnitude of the electric field goes down. And that's exactly what we had before. Okay. But again, that's the magnitude. It doesn't, it's not the direction. It's not the electric field vector. So if I want to find the vector, then I have to, I have to know something about the configuration.